reopening <laughs> the public, the joint public hearing at 517 p.m. This is a joint public hearing with the tree warden regarding the removal of a set of trees. Uh, what I'm gonna do, I think, is I will share my screen or share the, the legal notice about the tree removal so people on the Zoom can see the trees in question. Uh, and I would expect that this was a, would be a good opportunity to um, ask Keith, the tree warden, to give us a rundown on these trees and why they need to be removed. Sure. Um, first of all, would you like me to read the notice or do you think it's be being the fact that it's on the screen in front of us, I don't need to read it? I think um, in the absence of an objection, the fact that this notice is on screen and the meeting is being recorded, that should be sufficient. Okay. So let's get right to it. <clears throat> the, okay, I can, by looking at the participants, I can see that one of the abutters on 111 North Street, Chad Adams is present and attending the meeting. Um, he, that, that tree at 111 North Street was a request by the landowner um, in regards to wanting to reconfigure his driveway on his property. Um, <clears throat> other than that, unless someone else, I saw Alec Ross on here as well. I don't know if Alec has any comments, but um, the I'll just go over things real quick. The, the three trees on Chestnut Plain, the two large maples are on there because they are um, deteriorated to the point where I can no longer um, trim them without just leaving nothing but you know, it, it'll just, it, they, they can't be trimmed anymore. The one at 198 Chestnut Plain Road, that 12 inch elm tree was a <clears throat> elm tree that we planted. And obviously if you've seen it next, sort of like in, just adjacent to the post office and the library, it is, um, it has, it leafed out, but it's, it's dead. There's no leaves on it. Um, some of the elms that we've planted they're hybrids, they're um, supposed to be susceptible to the Dutch elm disease. However, not all of them are, and this one is, is failed. So I would like to remove that one and, and then plant a new one next to it. Though Again, the one at 111 North Street, that 20 inch maple, that's there because of the landowner requesting it. All the other ones, everything on Haydenville Road and Weber Road, are on there as a direct result of Eversource petitioning the town or petitioning the tree warden to have a hearing to have those removed um, for the maintenance of their power lines. They have, um, they have also contacted the landowners in, in those locations and in, they are also doing a lot of tree removals that are not on this public hearing because they're outside of the town layout on private property. And at that point in time, that's an agreement between Eversource and the property owner and it has no, the town of Whateley has no dealings. And so I see Sarah has her hand up. It goes from inches to feet on uh, 253. Oh. I wanted to yeah. confirm that wasn't a typo. That that is a typo. Okay. All those that 253 Haydenville Road, all of those, everything from there, it should be inches, not in feet. Okay. Okay. Yeah, those would everything be a should 30 be inches. Foot. Yeah. Yeah, it's right. It's obviously we don't have any 22 feet diameter trees, but yes, that's that's a mistake. Sorry. Well, I was thinking it might be height. No, that has okay. that's that is that the, all of the trees are a measurement at um, what's called breast height. You know, about five feet off the ground. Okay, so it's inches on everything. Thank yes. you. Yes. So I 
don't know if, uh, if you have you as the planning board have any questions for the 111 North Street, which is Chad Adams. Since he's here, he could answer a question if you have any questions. Keith, who pays for that? Who pays for what? For, for taking the North Street tree that, down. That tree removal will be at his, at the property owner's expense, not the town of Waitley. Thank you. Chad, are you are you proposing planting a replacement trees in a different yes, location? Yes, I am. I'd like to plant another tree on the opposite side of my power lines. Um, yes, I would definitely plant another tree. Can we ask? Can we ask Eversource to plant trees? That there is. Uh, I can. I can certainly pose the question to them. However, I don't have an answer at this point in time. Um, if they were to plant trees, you know, maybe they would do something out, you know, outside of the area. That, yeah, in different location, obviously. In different locations. That's certainly an option I can ask um, Eversource, and I, I don't mind doing that. I'm One of the things ask. I can also shed light on is the town of Waitley, we purchase trees and I have getting harder and harder for me to find anyone that will accept the trees. Um, number one, I can't, I don't, I won't plant any trees in the town layout that are underneath power lines because it's only a matter of years before Eversource is going to come in and butcher them to begin with. I also have places where homeowners have um, solar panels on their roof. And I, and when I talk to them, they said, no, we don't want any trees on, on our frontage because they're going to block our solar panels. Um, I've also attempted some locations and the property owner says, no, they don't want them because they don't want the, the maintenance of them. And I'm, I'm dealing with that always. And I don't have the ability to go around and water them every day when we plant them. And if the property owner isn't willing to help out by helping by nurturing it and taking care of it, then I'm going to be wasting my money if we plant a tree and it's not to be, and no one will take care of it in its younger years. Sarah, again, a question. Uh, I'm sorry you have such a hard time finding people. I love my trees. Um, but along those lines, particularly advice for Chad Adams, you have varieties that you're suggesting or targeting? Um, I would either plant another maple or, or an oak or something to that effect. I mean, whatever the town really wanted. And of course it would be at no expense to the town. And yes, I would absolutely take care of the tree. That was more for um, um, Keith, just, I know he tends to have types and have done some um, investigation on the types. So I was curious if he could give you some advice on what type. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I'd be more than happy to take this advice. Yeah, I can work with Chad on that. Thank you. Question. Keith, and that is regarding all of the trees that Eversource has proposed removing, um, really two questions. One, do we really have a choice? Like if Eversource says they want to take them or trim them, do we really have any options to say no? Or what's the risk to the town if we declined? <clears throat> and two, I guess my related question is, do you have an opinion about the you know, the appropriateness or the, 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 the good judgment being made by Eversource, are they, are, are these, re, are these truly threatening trees in your opinion, or do you not have a, do you feel not qualified to make that judgment? I just wanted to sort of get a second, you might say a second opinion mm -hmm. from you about the, 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 the need to remove these particular trees. By all means, um, there are some on Hayden, uh, some of them that I would clearly say should should go. There are some that are um, that could be just 
left and, and done heavy trimming on. Um, so to answer your question, yes, they, they could be left and do heavy trimming on them. Um, but the other thing that is, you know, this list here it really is only a fraction of the trees they're going to be removing when they come back to town, mm. which is scheduled to be sometime in July. Um, mm. They came in and started doing some and did like a lot of tree removal already on Hayden the Road on private property. Um, but so far they haven't done any of the ones that are in the town layout, but um, so, you know, to answer your question, Brant, yes, I could, you know, I can go back to the table with them and say, you know what, this, this one here, um, I would recommend just doing a, a heavy tr a trimming. However, the vast majority of the ones on Haydenville Road, they're they're a tree where if you, once you remove it, you unless you see the stump, you almost don't know it was there in some instances because they're so tightly pack, packed. It's not like the ones, for instance, on Chestnut Plain Road where once it's cut, it's like it's missed. Yeah. Um, when you're on some of the the tight areas where there's trees every every two to three feet, there's a there's these large trees that have been there a long time. It, it's it's not so noticeable. Yeah. yeah, it's it's sad. There's really no it's sad that they have to be removed. There's like there's no constituency for the trees. <laughs> I see Donna's raised her hand. Donna? Yeah, hi, thanks. Donna Wiley, um, 184 Chestnut Plain. Um uh, uh it may be that everyone knows this, but Keith, um the comment that you just made that Eversource will be uh, removing quite a few more trees. That, um, I believe that the reason these trees are called out is that these trees are on our scenic roads. That's well, they're in the layout. Yeah. Excuse me. They're, they're in, in the, the layout. You mean the town frontage? They're within the town's layout of the road. Once they're outside of my layout, even though they're on a scenic road, then no, I understand. Yeah. Oh, I see. I see. So your point is not your point about other trees was not about trees in East Waitley or farther into West Waitley. They're trees in the same neighborhoods that happen to be on private property rather than town frontage. Correct. And the oh, fact right. there's well, going to be there's going to be large areas where they're cutting down row, uh, row, rows and rows of trees, I but see. they're not in the town layout, but they're still along the scenic road, but we have no jurisdiction on private property. Right, right. I understand. Mm -hmm. um, well, that's good to know because that's obviously even more worrying. I, my second question, um, maybe it's partly for Sarah. Um, I had the impression that when Eversource uh, um, came through on Christian Lane, that individual property owners were given the option to ask for trimming rather than complete removal of trees. How they presented it on the postcard was, we're cutting down your tree. If you have a problem with that, call us. Right. It was, so, it was a, sort of an opt-out <laughs> approach. Yeah, but you had to make some real effort to opt out. And I actually worked ever sort of, um, it was Northeast Tree. It wasn't Aspland. Um, Nor tree Northern cutter, Tree. Northern Tree. They came and the guy was very good, very responsive. And I actually very much talked to him about what portions of the tree, and particularly because my maples are my best sap producing maples. So I was like, ah. he was very responsive. And Donna, just to elaborate a little bit more, these, the ones on Haydenville Road, and to my knowledge, they've already contacted the, all the property owners. Mm -hmm. And they have not had any objection. The, the objection, the only thing is, I'm having to do it because they're within my layout. I so see. some of these, some of these areas, some of the trees that they're cutting could be in my layout, and then five feet away, there's a tree that's on private property that I'm right. not showing you on this list because it has nothing to do with the town. Right. Right. I, I guess. Um, 
if you could, I guess I have a third question and then I will stop asking questions. And this is about Keith, your comment about not having um, budget and staffing to maintain the trees that you plant. I, I did notice and was happy that because you just planted a number of trees on Chestnut Plain and your guys right before we had a long period with no rain at all and your guys came through with a water truck and, and were saving the baby trees. I, I Maybe this is not a question, maybe this is more of a budgeting question, but we have a budget line for trees. And I wonder if we ought to be thinking about using part of that budget line to keep the trees we plant alive. Um, you know, I, I've, it's just a matter I, I of have, yeah. you know, limited resources and, you know, right. yes, I was able to do it, but I'm not saying when we get into other projects and it's dry out, I, I don't always have that opportunity to, to yes. nurture them as much as I'd like to when a homeowner, if they're willing and they want the tree to survive, they're going to go out and water it to help me. And right. when I don't have their help, it makes it hard. That makes perfect sense. Keith, we don't have a budget where we could contract it out. Um, my, I have barely enough money to have a, hire a contractor to cut down the trees. Never mind um, having an outside contractor to to come in and do maintenance like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh. Well, um, are there other comments and questions about this? Is this something? Is this something where Keith uh, typically a motion is made and a vote is held, or what? Yes. Yep. Yes. Okay. I'm. I move we accept the list. Judy has made a motion to accept the list. I'll second that. And Sarah has seconded it. Um, any discussion before we vote? The motion has been made and seconded. Last chance. Okay, then. Uh, and this is a, a planning board and Keith are the, the ones able to vote think, in this joint hearing. I think the you know, planning because board has... The planning board just has to take a vote on it. I don't need to to partake in that vote. Okay, all right, so this is just a planning board vote. Okay, so I'll just do a quick roll call vote. Um, um, Judy? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Tom? Yes. And Brant is aye. So that's four out of four, unanimous. Uh, so I'm gonna close the joint public hearing. 535. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you, Keith. Thank you, Keith. Thank you. Bye now. Bye. Okay, sort of sad, but all right, let me stop sharing. So next on our agenda is going to be, uh, we're going to have a discussion about a draft housing production plan. I'm just uh, I'm sure I'm looking at the agenda right. Yeah, so we're gonna have a discussion of the 2023 housing production plan update. Megan Rhodes of the Franklin Regional Council of Governance is with us. Kate, Kate um, Wilkowitz of the Housing Committee is here. Um, Kate, would it make sense for you, um, for me to recognize you first, to just maybe say a few words to frame the conversation and then and then introduce Megan and then you know Megan can take the floor, does that make sense? Yeah, I think that's fine, thanks. So um, about a year ago, and Megan can correct me a little bit with the timeline, but, um, the select board chose as one of the things that the, the Franklin Council of Governments can work on to work on a plan with the housing committee in regards to trying to move some housing, um, 
plans forward. And so over the past year or so, we have been working on this plan on and off. And, you know, I think, sorry, I, okay, I see, I'm going to guess that. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Background. Background. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's fine. Yeah. So, um, we have put a little bit of time into this and had a number of meetings and gone through um, the process with Megan, who's really shepherded us through getting some of the factual pieces. And, you know, it wasn't until maybe the last month or so that we really started looking at like the meet, which has, it talks about the recommendations. And, um, you know, that's, I think, the part where there's a lot more time for us sort of as as time goes by to talk about what if any of these recommendations the planning board is interested in considering, but the purpose of the plan itself is really to try to sort of signal to the state, and I'm sure Mingan will speak to this too, that the, the town is actually on board with trying to establish some types of affordable housing here um, in town. And um, I know Megan has worked on this with a couple of other Franklin County towns recently as well. So. Um, a lot of towns in eastern Massachusetts have housing production plans and update them all the time. Uh, I think the western part of the state, the smaller communities tend not to always have enough staff to be able to maintain all the plans that the state would like us to in all the different areas. So this is, I think, the first time Waitley's had an opportunity to take a stab at it. So I, I think that that's where we are, and we're really happy to try to um, use it as sort of a springboard to more collaboration with how we can move some things forward, hopefully in cooperation in terms of trying to get some um, affordable housing into town. And with that, I'll introduce Megan Rhodes from Franklin County Council of Governments to, to kind of go over it. She's really the detail person. All right. All right. Thank you, Catherine. Yeah. So. Yep. Uh, over a year ago, actually, Hannah from the town had applied for a grant. So we actually had money set aside from the state to do a housing production plan. Her thought was that with COVID, teleworking, um, a whole lot of other issues that Waitley could be seeing a population growth and wanted to be the town to be prepared for that. Um, there's there's needs currently in town for housing. Um, We've heard from not just in Waitley, but all over the region that housing is very expensive and hard to find. Um, even if you make a lot of money, it's still hard to find housing. Um, and then there's also those who can't afford housing. So what do we do about that? There's also the issues of, you know, people are aging and changing. They're growing in family or they're decreasing in family or they're getting older. How do they still stay in town as their housing needs change? Um, so with all of that kind of in a context, uh, the town applied for a grant to do a housing production plan, and that's why we're here today. For the last year, we've been working on this plan. We have done a survey of the town. We have um, done a lot of data analysis, um, and then we have worked with the housing committee to come up with recommendations, strategies, kind of a, a menu of strategies that the town could um, employ as circumstances change to potentially help diversify the housing stock and make sure um, everyone's housing needs are met. Um, so it's actually a big plan. It's 111 pages <laughs> and that is required by the state. So the whole format and the template of this housing production plan is actually a, um, it's a plan that the state requires that can be customized by each of the towns. And it has a lot of elements that you have to put in there. So but that kind of makes it a big bulky, not so friendly document, which is um, a shame because there's a lot of good stuff in there, but it 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 we required to make it a big beast. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not light reading. Um, so, but what that does is it looks at everything. It looks at who lives in the town now, who will be living in the town, how is it aging, how is it changing, what is your what type of housing do you currently have in town, what is what projected um, changes are allowed to happen under your current zoning. What, um, how well does that how current housing match up with what your current population needs, both in terms of ages, po total population and incomes, and how might that change in the future? Um, and so with that big picture there, we have come up with a menu of recommendations for the town. Um, 
And let me just take one quick two, two points for you to understand for the, this housing production plan. By having a, an official housing production plan that is approved by the state, um, your town will be protected um, from Chapter 40B developers. What does that mean? So right now, because Waitley um, officially only has less than 1% of its housing as formal subsidized affordable housing, a developer, developer could come in and say, I want to build affordable housing and I can build it anywhere I want and I, want, I can build it to look like whatever I want. Um, and you can't say no right now because you have less than 10% of your housing as officially subsidized. But by having this plan in place, you can tell that developer, no, actually, um, you know, we might want affordable housing, but we don't want it in that location, or we don't want it to look like that. We want to have some control over it. And this, by having a housing production plan allows you to have that control over what's called a chapter 40B developer or a comprehensive permit. So that is a huge advantage to having to going through and having an 111 page document that has a lot of required elements because it gives you that protection, that local protection. Um, uh, Megan, also, uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, Megan, um, how, how is that uh, control structured? So the town has control. How, how does that actually get implemented to someone walk through the door? So you have, there's two things. You have to be able to have control and say, no, thank you. If you want to, you have to have a housing production plan that's been approved by the state. That's the first thing you have to have done. You also have to show that you're making progress towards providing affordable housing. And the state has created defined levels of progress based on your current housing stock. It's 0.5% of your current housing stock. So if you can show that you've produced about three units in that year of affordable housing or in the recent, um, in that recent, one of that developer walks in the door recently, you've shown that you've produced three units, you can say no. Um, if you can't, if you, you have not produced those three units, but you still have a housing production plan, you still have more leverage to say, maybe that, yeah, we want affordable housing, but we don't want it in that location because of that aquifer or that wetland or it doesn't fit in that, you can still um, have some control. What, what, so, what entity, what, what town entity is saying no? So it goes to your zoning board of appeals. And, but they are only authorized to say no or yes if you have a housing production plan right. and have made some progress. If you wanted to do a friendly 40B, you still could. Yep, yes. Definitely. But if for some reason it doesn't fit within what you guys want, you could say no. Yeah. yeah. Um, the other point I was going to make, and feel free to interrupt me, I'm, this is just a discussion for you guys, um, is the town has also gotten a grant to do a comprehensive plan visioning to create a comprehensive plan for your future. And by having this housing production plan, you will have checked off the housing chapter of that of that plan. So you've already gotten a portion of it done. So that's just kind of a bonus point there. Um, all right. So I what we can do is I just what we I can kind of go over the context of the plan. Um, what is in it is a lot of data. Two thirds of it is data of of really dives into who lives here, what type of housing, you know, are the, you know, things like that. Basically what it says is um, Waitley's population, it will be, it has been declining and may continue to decline. Um, probably not though with broadband, um, honestly, climate migration is a new thing and it's, we've seen it happening here. People are moving here away from disasters all over the country. Um, and even if population continues to decline, your housing needs are still going to increase because projections show that household sizes are smaller. So even if your population were to keep going down, the number of housing you need, units you need is, is still going up. So no matter what, you're still gonna need more housing. The whole region's gonna need more housing for people who live here. Um, and we, we know that in Waitley right now, there's not enough housing for the current population. 
Um, 30% of your existing Waitley residents are paying too much for housing. 30% um, pay over a third of their income on housing costs. So you already have needs within your current residents in terms of better affordability options. Your population is aging. So how do they stay in town um, while aging? How do they um, stay in their homes or stay within town? Um, if their current house is not a good fit for them in terms of accessibility. Um, and that is the, your in, the housing values are one of the highest in Franklin County, Waitley. Some of the most expensive homes are in Waitley. So there's definitely um, a need for moderate income workforce housing, as well as lower income housing, but particularly that kind of that missing middle is needed in Waitley. Um, so that's kind of the overview of the context of what the recommendations we've created. Uh, and I can share my screen. Let me pull up the recommendations. Can everyone see a Word document? Yes. Yeah, okay. So what this is, at the end of this, uh, end of this big document is a table, a summary of strategies that the town could employ to diversify housing options for both market rate and affordable housing. These choices on this table are just that, they're choices. This plan does not require the town to implement any of them or all of them, not, they, it's nothing, this does not require the town to do anything. But these are suggestions that the town could use that are tailored to your circumstances in which you could make more smaller homes, more affordable homes, homes that are um, closer to transit. Um, there's a variety of options. And so these are things you can pick and choose. So as circumstances warrant, you could say, you know, it seems like right now there seems to be more need for accessory dwelling units no one's really building them and i know we have that allowed in our zoning code but why are people not um, building them let's let's take a look at our zoning for our accessory dwelling units and see if we can tweak them to promote them and make sure that they still fit within our community so the suge those suggestions are here um and they are don't have to be followed word for word if if, for instance, um, the first recommendation is to permit all types of accessory dwelling units to be built up to 900 square feet, which is a little bit bigger, um, I think, or I can't remember, maybe it's by right. Um, you can, you can when you, when you want to take a look at accessory dwelling units, you could say, no, I want 800 square feet or 950. You're not beholden to 900 square feet right here. This is just a suggestion, and that's up to the body, implementing body. So, for instance, because this is a zoning recommendation, it would be the planning board to decide how best to tweak zoning related to accessory dwelling units to promote more housing. Um, so, within this, these menu of strategies that the town could implement that's being recommended by this plan, um, the general themes are small incremental things. Because the town doesn't have sewer um, and limited water, there's not, you know, we're not going to be recommending to build huge multi-apartment family apartments in, in town center. But so we're going to have to rely on small incremental changes to make things happen, um, make sure we provide needs for housing for everybody. Um, so what that does is we, we have talked about accessory dwelling units. Um, potentially making the zoning more flexible for two family homes. Um, focusing on housing where there is public transit uh, along five and 10, how can that be compatible with commercial uses? Maybe it's not, um, but that does seem like if, if you want to have people to not always have to rely on car, that might be an option. Um, because you're limited on water, what, how do we make sure that we can potentially build denser housing, but not um, impact our water supply and our sensitive natural resources. So we've recommended things like doing a feasibility study to look at the soils, making sure that if we, before we even attempt to make more density, let's make sure it's okay for the environment. Um, we've also looked at um, 
let's see, where are we? Never mind. Incentivizing affordable housing units, looking at the density, potential density bonuses for either affordable housing or senior housing. Um, Judy, I'd gotten your comments and I did add, a, actually the ones that are in red in uh, track changes, I have inserted based on your comments, um, potentially creating a mixed use residential district near either Old State Road or Fat Route 5 and 10, um, waiving dimensional requirements to allow affordable or senior only housing. Um, and then same within the cluster zoning bylaw, which no one seems to be taking advantage of reviewing that to see what can be done to improve that. Um, and then uh, collaborating with regional partners such as Rural Development Inc, Habitat for Humanity, um, and then focusing also to reduce energy costs for people who currently live in town. How do we make homes more efficient, energy efficient, so that at least they're not paying more of their income to heat and cool their homes. Um, so those are, that's kind of the, the basic structure of what this plan recommends. Can I just make a point that you, you create, um, I think, old steps, so, um, a mixed use district along Old State Road. We did a master plan, I want to say 2000, at some sometime between 2000 and 2010, um, that had a mixed use layout and a design for a Christian Lane to, to 91. I don't know if you've seen that. I have, yeah. And it had, you know, uh, apartments above the stores and integrating the fire, the fire department and the police department into a, a, a village center um, and, and trying to accomplish some of the goals that you're talking about here. And in addition to having a, an economic incentive from the course of the commercial component. Okay, great. Do you have the date? Do you know, do you remember the date of that? It was 2000. It was the early 2000s. Was the plan, I don't think it got actually approved. No, it didn't. I, right. I, I it was the done. That, got, the select board never adopted it for, for unknown reasons, at least unknown to the general public. Huh. I didn't know that. Yeah. We're gonna try and take take a take two with this new comprehensive plan. Um, we're gonna, so the town has funding to start a visioning process for the next year, which actually I'm gonna be leading. Um, I think it's going to be underway beginning in July, if we can get people together um, to make sure we get people's buy-in and what their clear needs are. So we make sure that it doesn't just sit on a shelf and never get approved. Megan, have you feel like you've you've done a you've sort of covered the main points of the recommendations, right? Is that yeah. fair statement? If I may, I'd like to make a, a couple of comments to the board, something that Kate and I have been talking about quite a bit. Um, before we potentially dig into and discuss some of the specific recommendations, what this is leading up to is a vote by the planning board to endorse or accept this plan. And Kate and I have talked a lot, and I think, and we've talked with Megan about what that actually means. Um, and I think it would be very useful before we even get into details of the recommendations to kind of work backwards from, you know, we're gonna have to vote, why don't we make sure we understand what we would be voting on? We're not planning on doing this vote today, right? right. Today was just a preliminary discussion, feedback. You know, there's kind of a working assumption we've all had a chance to read or at least skim read this substantial report. But even if you haven't, we're not making any decisions about it tonight. And before today, tonight's meeting is over, we'll talk about dates for when we might do that. But I'd like to foreshadow and sort of frame, I think it'd be helpful if everyone had a feeling for what they might eventually be asked to vote on. And we've, uh, and so I'm gonna sort of make a statement. I'm gonna ask Megan, because I know Kate and I have talked about this. Um, so I'm the representative from the Planning Board 2000 Committee, right? And so Kate and I have been kind of talking a little bit about this. So, it, it's been made clear that these recommendations in this report are not 
do not and will not represent commitments by the planning board to do any of those recommendations, right? Um, the report has to have recommendations because that's what these reports do. Uh, and we need a report like this endorsed or accepted by the planning board as well as by the select board. So there's a separate conversation with the select board. And I think, Megan, it comes to the planning board first. It wouldn't reach the select board without it getting past the planning board first. Right. And I had talked to Fred about that and it was his preference at the point yes. that we had the joint meeting anyway. So, yeah, that's right. So there'll be a two step process. Um, so it will eventually get to the select board. And then once the plan has been endorsed or accepted by the planning board and the uh, select board, it is submitted to the state for review and approval. Once it's reviewed and approved by the state, we've accomplished, you know, one of those two goals related to the hostile 40B uh, issue. But really, it's like now we have a plan in place against which we are expected to make progress. Now, in terms of how we make progress back to those recommendations, um, again, they're not in there to say that we must do any or all of them. And, and the reason I point, put that out to you is because it, it, it should influence what we think we're voting on. And I, and so Kate and I have talked about whether there would be a motion before the planning board and a similar motion eventually before the select board, whether to, and the, and the word choice might be important. We might have a motion to endorse the plan, or we might have a motion to accept the plan. I mean, we can decide what the motion is. I want, I'm gonna ask Megan in a moment if she has any feedback to us about what kind of motion would be needed to be made and approved by the planning board to you know, get, get this approved at the state level. But I think the, at least the intent of the language of the motion is that it, it indicates that the planning board is, you know, read this report and is, you know, we can have a discussion about what it might mean for us to accept or endorse the report while not being, while not pledging to do right. any or all of the recommendations. Right. I had a little bit of guilt when I first started looking at the recommendations, seeing that like the first, the bulk of them seemed like planning board recommendations, right? And that my, my, I'm certainly not attempting to, to put any extra work on a, another committee by any stretch. I think it's just really, this is a, a process and to really try to make some, some forward movement, um, which, you know, we haven't had a lot of that happening with the housing committee in the last couple of years in particular, but um, yeah, I think what Brant's saying about the plan, it, it gives us, you know, this first step, the state will see this, you know, in a good light that we're making some efforts and then, you know, and hopefully then as we move into this visioning process, we can collaborate a little bit more and, and see how we can move some things forward. Um, yeah. One thing I did not mention is that by having a housing production plan, you also get bonus points on other grant applications. So it does also help you get more money for the town. Um, in terms of, Brand, did you want to say anything more? Do you want me to talk I about I think that's fine. I'd like to hear a little bit on the, you know, is it significantly meaningful to say that we're we're accepting versus endorsing the plan? I personally, right right now, would feel like, comfortable with saying that I accept the report, um, whether, I mean, to me, saying that I endorse the report might, I might have to reflect a little bit more about whether I'd feel comfortable with that, though I think I probably would. But anyway, I wanna I'd be curious, Megan, if that matters. Again, I'm just really trying to set our, I think if we understand what we're ultimately gonna be voting for or against, then that could help focus our time and energies on at what level of detail we want to examine these recommendations and what we might want to get in or out at this point before that vote. So, so the official guidance I have in front of me says that it must be, this is, this is it's one sentence, and so it's a, a, 
I think up to you to how do you interpret. Um, just that it was adopted by the Municipal Planning Board. So adopted. whether that's accept or endorse, or you just want to say adopt. What I will say is, let me share what I did not mention. Uh, let me share the this. I think the real thing to think about is that this housing production plan provides a menu of options to achieve these goals, sort of highlighted right. in yellow. So this is really what you are adopting, is the goal to encourage a mix of housing densities, ownership patterns, prices, and building types to match the needs of residents and businesses now and in the future, and to increase the amount of affordable housing weightly in a way that is sustainable for the town's natural resources. So everything within this plan is geared towards those two goals. And so anything that the that you decide to implement in the future, whether it's a tweaking of the zoning that's specifically recommended in here or another tool, it doesn't have to be listed in here. It's with this in mind, these these goals. So that's um, I don't know if that helps you make you feel more comfortable about what it is you're you're trying to this plan is trying to do, but that be, is really kind of what you're adopting is to right. work towards a mix of housing for future and current residents. Okay. By you the know, way, I think we mean overarching goals. Yes. <laughs> <I'm Yeah. reading. laughs> yes. My God. Yeah. I mean, we are, we, we do try to exceed expectations. Yes. I'll make a comment right change right now. That's funny. I did not notice that. And spell checked in either because it's spelled correctly. Right. Okay. I I can understand this, and I'm sure that this is all entirely true. And yet, on the just to play devil's advocate, um, I know with the open space plan, um, when they go to revise it or update it or periodically somebody dusts it off and pulls it out, uh, it's like a checklist. This happened. This happened. This happened. And you sort of feel like you're failing if the checklist is, hmm. is less than 50% done. So I, I don't know quite how to put those two together. I, I wouldn't, yeah. Say we're small towns with no staff. And so that if you check off two, you should be really patting yourself on the back. Okay. I, 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 I would, I especially when it comes to housing, because sometimes the pre-development part of some of these projects can take 10 years. Yeah. And that's not like I sat on a small project for, for in my 16 years working at Hilltown and it, 10 years were pre-development. 10. No, I know. And there, zoning there were takes, others that zoning were longer. Takes time too. Um, right. That's, right. Right. So I think the another... measurable, like that, even though it, and I, I get even a little antsy that it, it tries to get down to this 0.5% per year. Like it, that means for us, like three housing units a year. And I think, you know, habitat projects are like booked three or four years in the future. So like we, we have to be really creative to even do three housing units a year. And even though it sounds like a small goal, I, I know going in that like, here's this plan, we're going to be able to go and say, we're making an effort, but and probably what's going to happen is we're going to say we've done the best we can in Franklin County. The resources are very limited. The state agency in our county does not have adequate resources to support housing development. So a group of volunteers are doing what they can. And, you know, we have one habitat project in the pipeline or we have this or we have that. And and, yeah, and no, understood, understood. Yeah. But it is it is a little a little discouraging that part but Wait, how, how, how does the state accept the report do they say thank you very much or do they come back and challenge your recommendations um that's a great how question does that play out? so what they do is so they have a long checklist i mean they they have a couple pages like a rubric for grading it yeah, they basically just make sure that we've mentioned everything that's required in these plans. And if that is true, then they they stamp it approved. Um, I have done quite a few of these now and I haven't had any come back with comments. They've, as long as we meet 
the you know we've we have this section included we do this we do that then that's fine um i i everything in this plan meets everything that's required of the state so um hopefully fingers crossed with the new administration nothing will change um and it should be just approved um because we have we have made sure that everything is included that needs to be how long does it typically take um it usually takes a month or two for them to re review it it's faster than the open space people much faster because <laughs> there's actually statutory requirements so they have to because a developer could be coming in um they, they have to turn it around i think one of the biggest areas of discussion that kate and i had about this was you know there seemed to be, and, and maybe this is a comment directed towards you, Megan, as well. There's a little bit of a assumption or a implicit assertion with all of these planning board actions, you know, sort of like if we zone for it, they will build. And I mean, we've seen over the years that develop, you know, production of new housing, market rate housing is very low in Waitley just to begin with. And in talking this over with Kate, I think. At least she kind of lit the light bulb over my head that there are certain things we might be able to do in zoning that will make certain things possible or easier that might not have been before, whether it's the things in exactly as written in this report or not. But it will take some concerted and likely volunteer action and that you know sort of the housing committee is going to continue this is not this report is not kind of like a handoff of work from the housing committee to the planning board um, i would continue as the planning board's representative on the housing committee and that this would this plan could be seen as a the beginning of a of a long-term collaboration between the housing committee and the planning board sort of around those overarching goals um, and how we might prioritize them, what we might change in terms of zoning and, and, and you know, at what speed and order and so forth. Um, so and you're not yeah, alone I, in this. So right, actually concurrently right now, I'm leading a project at the COG to do a regional housing plan. This conversation has been happening in a lot of towns, and so we're decided we've we've got to have the larger conversation because everyone's having these micro conversations, and Waitley can't do it all, and Sunderland can't do it all. So let's let's figure out how to do this on also on a regional scale. I mean, it's going to take the local tiny zoning bylaw changes, a couple accessory dwelling units here, some more you know duplexes here, and then we're all going to have to get together in the big boat and row. <laughs> and so it's. We've also applied for another grant to do um, like a public education campaign too. So when zoning changes come to town meeting, everyone in the region understands why we're doing these zoning changes. Why do we need to tweak our accessory dwelling units? Why do we need to make sure that mixed uses is an allowable use in appropriate locations? Those type of things, because not everyone does right now. And it doesn't need to be so contentious at town meeting. So um, yeah, so it might seem like you're doing these little things that aren't gonna get you very much, but you've got to start somewhere. And I will say, you know, I think um, zoning is a powerful tool. I, there's a, there potentially could be a lot of people coming to our region. Passenger rail is here. We have fabulous broadband. People are allowing telework. People are moving here from California fires. Let's be prepared. So let's make sure our water resources are protected, our environmental is protected, but we also create some thriving, vibrant communities as well that kind of fill our schools back up. And uh, there's a real potential here. Let's get in front of that. I, I did have one other question for this, at least for now. When you shared you reminded me when you shared the screen with the table of recommendations, and maybe you should do that again. Sure. Because I had I had forgotten the fact that there was this prioritize prioritization oh, yeah. right. column. So it it occurs to me that there is a vote pending before the planning board that's more than just we are voting to adopt or endorse or accept this report, but 
as part of that, we have provided some input into like putting X's in boxes where we are asserting that we think those are high priority items for us. And if, and if we need to fill in that high priority column with X's in a subset of boxes, then I do feel like it requires the planning board members to look at those items holistically and decide are there things listed there that, you know, at least to a reasonable degree of approximation seem like the kind of thing that the planning board over the next one to three years say would want to at least study and prioritize for action. And we may have to, and this is where we might feel like we want to change some wording or, you know, I think Judy made some great suggestions that were added to the table. Maybe some of those should be high priority. So I wanted to open that part of the conversation up as well. So we, Megan, do need to select some items from these this table and mark them as high priority. And what would that mean? Yep, so you pretty much explained it. So what is, I have marked some as high priority based on a feedback from a few members of the housing committee. Not all of the housing committee has weighed in yet. Um, so that just to let you know there, but so some people have already marked some as high priority, but um, they've only prioritized. And what I could do actually, I was actually thinking about this is, well, the only thing that I've heard so far is people have prioritized these big themes, not necessarily yes. each specific action. Right. And so I might just kind of reorder the table and send it back out to everybody um, because you might want to, uh, I think it'd be easier to prioritize the big ideas and then later you decide what direction you want the to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Um, but, yeah, that's but, a good idea, but, yeah, so the so so right now, like for instance, the, a housing committee member has prioritized um, access looking into accessory apartments and how can that be potentially tweaked for more production there. Um, so that's why all of those are checked. But by prioritizing accessory dwelling units, that just means that that is something that you would like to pursue over the next couple of years in investigating and determining whether that's one feasible, two is it needed. And then what direction would you want to go? How would you want to do that? And it doesn't have to be specifically what's in here. Um, so I wouldn't get too hung up on the wording. I really wouldn't because this is not, um, if I say all types of accessory units built up to 900 square feet, you do not, if you want to pursue changing the size, it does not have to be what's written here. That's up to the planning board to decide at that time. So these are just potential options for you to think about to kind of get that ball rolling in terms of the general theme of accessory dwelling units. So I really wouldn't get too hung up on, on like the specific, this is not the actual zoning bylaw. This is just kind of the general direction you might want to go. Yeah. Okay. I would feel more comfortable with prioritizing at the strategy level versus sort of the action item. Also, it seems a little odd for the housing committee to prioritize work for the planning board. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was definitely uh, they, uncomfortable. They put all of theirs on low priority, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And I like the idea of the mixed-use district. Um, again, but I like the number of the a lot of the Right, I remember from your memos, a, a lot of the commercial district itself really isn't suitable at all. No, no, I think but, you're right, the, but... The, the Christian Lane district, when it was proposed, made more sense than it does now because of there have been quite a few APRs mm -hmm, there, that's so there's true. less land to. It's 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 become more agricultural by default, and and that's right. unfortunate, but. Right. But it still maybe makes sense. So anyway, somebody yeah. should be looking at this because that would be a great way to get more commercial as well as more housing. The idea was you could build not only build out, you can build up in the in the district. Yeah. 
I really liked um, the sort of mixed use where there's public transportation, having um, commercial and residential in the same buildings. Um, where there's public transportation, that's one problem with Waitley. We are cars. It's, it's a real problem with attracting someone to come build affordable housing when they ask how public transportation is and you tell them they're like, it was nice speaking with you, goodbye. I, I did actually years ago have a call with um, someone about the DeMaio site, but the housing committee wanted it put back on the market as before we even really took a serious look at it because I, for, for housing, at one point we had talked to Habitat for Humanity. They said there's too much site work for us to look at that site. Um, then I spoke to another um, group that would potentially be interested in talking about thinking through that idea of having some mixed use in that area, um, which I thought would be fantastic, but then the um, it's worth going back to them. They're a little discouraged about the transportation with the lack of transportation. And um, I'm trying to remember what this second barrier was, but I do I do think now that it, that's something worth reconsidering, but yeah, it's a, that corridor as well maybe has a little potential. But I also don't wanna lose our commercial property because we have so oh, yeah. little. So right. that's why it'd be nice yeah. to be able to put it all Above, together. Right. Yeah, it's tricky. So, so we should be so we should be thinking about priorities before the next meeting. Is that that would be great? Yeah, there's no requirement in terms of how many priorities. You could just have one. You could make them all a priority. Um, it's up to you guys to, to decide how you want to do that. I will reformat this so it'll make it more clear how to to choose the priorities. Um, and I'll. And, I'll, and then it's up to you guys to decide how, well, how you want to do that. You know, I this is maybe silly, but zoning to me is a powerful tool, but it's a it's a slow one to to work. I mean, partly because it takes time to get implemented, and then partly it's it's an awareness thing. So if if you have this action plan to do so many houses in so many years. Um, would it make sense to put the zoning stuff later on this priority list? Just kind of leading off with it makes it sound like it's the most urgent thing. And and I think it's, in terms of speed, it's the least urgent, I think. Yep, but, um, we can certainly reorder things. I think in terms I, of the world of housing, it's actually one of the easier <laughs> tools to, to, to chip away at. Um, yeah, well, I understand that, thing. but I think, That's true, but um, it's also a, a delayed payback. So, yep. So there are also other recommendations, and the town is very fortunate to have CPA funds. They have a housing trust, so there are tools that the town can use. Um, they're also slow, unfortunately, to get enough money to actually implement and to build or to provide I wanna, money or buy I down. I want to talk to you. Home. I will send you some wording. I think the report definitely understand states the amount of CPA money you have to work with because you just deal with the bucket, the minimum, and, right? Yeah, and and not the not the um, unallocated funds. The you know the sixty five percent that's not specifically designated, right? And you never mentioned borrowing. I mean, I think you should be thinking about something more like seven hundred fifty thousand than the two hundred thousand that's there. Um, and I, I'll I'll send some wording if if right um, if that would help. But I think there's there's more help than you're. Not often somebody says I think there's more money. <laughs> that's optimistic. Right. I love it. Right. Right. It's sort of due. The housing has had the least amount of activity, right? We've done a great job getting a lot of applications in and through the CPAC funding. Um, and the housing committee hasn't had an opportunity to use its own allocation or greater, but, you know, yeah, I think everyone on the committee and knows that has been the case. 
and the town does have experience with borrowing against future yep. CPA revenues. Yep. And um, I don't think that would be an obstacle. You know, I, I sort of tried to work through the numbers in my head. I think you could be thinking about debt service of like 40 or $50,000 a year. That would That would come out of future housing money, of course, but it gives you it gives you some sure. capital to to play with at a point in time. Right. Having an appropriate de developer to to hear those words are is kind of a a tricky wicket, but yeah, that's I think that's well. There was that likely. To I don't be know. True. I think I sent it to you, Catherine. The the project on the planners listserv. I thought not knowing as much as I should about housing, but. There's a um, town in eastern Massachusetts that offered grants per unit grants to developers if they if they came up with an RFP for affordable housing and they were offering fifty thousand dollars a unit and and then it was all up to the developer you know you didn't have to right supervise anything or manage right. a plan or just just check off that they did what they were supposed to do with it I mean if if sure. they were dedicated to affordable housing. I, I've got the RFP somewhere I can, or the, yeah, the RFP. But you know, the six units would be 300,000 that would. Yeah, right. Then Make they have to do all the work. <laughs> right. So I'm gonna suggest that maybe we're starting to, you know, wind down for tonight on this topic. Uh, and so before we get concrete about next steps, let's talk about when this we might revisit this topic, specifically about dates. Here it is, the middle of June. Um, I don't know that, I mean, we have a regularly scheduled meeting on the calendar, at least two weeks hence on June 28th, though I know of nothing else, nothing aside potentially from this uh, on our agenda, we could potentially skip a meeting on June 28th. I suspect um, Mary's gonna go on strike if we keep having meetings every two two weeks. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think that, and, and there's a need to get caught up on minutes. Um, <laughs> the, I know that I have a constraint regarding the end of July. The next regular meeting would be the 26th of July, the last Wednesday. I will be out of the country and unable to attend. Uh -huh. Now, that doesn't mean that, um, actually, I remember Kate and I were asking about this. Um, so I'm gonna direct this question to Judy. Is there a mechanism or precedent or like- oh, right. If I were not attending a meeting, but I gave, say, you, Judy, my proxy, can I do that so that somebody could, somebody else on the planning board could vote, or I could communicate my vote in advance, I just so I could go on record as voting? Well, Megan probably knows as well as I do, but my sense is that you could vote maybe after you, after you saw the recording. I see. But, and I'm not even sure of that. Okay. Um, it's not like a special permit where you actually physically have to, or you can't vote until you have, I can't answer the question, okay. I guess. I would, right. I would be surprised. Okay. So I might have to, okay. I could. When do you leave? Are you, uh, like well, if we did it the third week or something? Well, I leave on the uh, 19th of July. So if we did a meeting four weeks from today on the 12th of July, that could work for me. I'm okay that, that day. Work for other people. And then you could skip the meeting at the end of July. Did you, were you aware that Tom has volunteered to serve another five months? Because I think, am I putting words in your mouth? Well, the, because I, our moderator I, skipped off to Sweden without appointing another. I was professor. talking to uh, Nat Fortune about uh, filling my slot, and there hasn't been much progress for a variety of good reasons. 
And um, I was worried that um, like tonight, if you were down one, you don't have a quorum. And I, I don't wanna leave the board in that situation since there's no urgency on my stepping off. So I, I, I agreed with Nat that I would extend it out to November and um, at least put a stake in the sand and see, see how we're doing in November. Okay, so that means- yeah, that's you... truly generous. I, yes. I see. You get two cakes now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There are conditions, but we can go into those later. So am I hearing though that the at least the four of us on tonight's call could do July, Wednesday, July 12th as another ad hoc out of cycle planning board meeting to address this housing production plan. You think there'll be a CPC meeting, Catherine? I do because we had one application, didn't we? Um, yeah, that, but, that's a good question. But if, if neither of us can make it, then it would right. have to be another. I think day. we have the right. We have the cumulative power in this case yeah. to have it scheduled at a different time. Okay. And hopefully that wouldn't be too bad. And we may not get out with one. No, we won't. Never mind. Well, no, but it wouldn't necessarily have to be in July. It could go to August, probably. Right. That's right. Yep. So Sarah, you would be good on July 12th, Wednesday? With the caveat that we don't have a meeting on the 28th of June. <laughs> That's easy for me to say yes to. And Tom, you're I'll gonna- I'll second that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Me too. Yeah, okay. summer right. meetings are tricky. All right, so we'll at least agree that we're gonna have a meeting on Wednesday, July 12th to discuss the housing production plan. Um, and so then I guess is next steps, what I would propose that the planning board members do, and, and you can choose to email me directly as the planning board representative of the housing committee, or you know Megan and or Kate, but do please CC me if you do communicate with them directly, but I'm gonna at least recommend the following. Um, Anticipating a motion on July 12th to, and maybe the motion might simply say to adopt this plan. Between now and then, contemplate what you would feel must be changed in the report, adds, deletes, you know, whatever, revisions. Um, what, how would the report need to be changed for you to feel comfortable voting in the affirmative on July 12th to say, adopt the report? So that between over the next few weeks, that would be the nature of your communications to, to me. And, like, and I think you have Kate and Megan's emails, but maybe we'll just make sure from the email distribution, hey, it would just be convenient to just email the three of us directly with that. I think that avoids the open meeting issue of emailing deliberate deliberation related uh, material to more than two members of a planning board. Brent, could I just ask that if people do have changes, they get it to us by um, the great the week before July fifth, or I guess the seventh is the absolute latest. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. So by July 7th at the latest. Because there's sort of like, uh, you know, this is luckily not the House of Representatives, but when we, we want to be able to have a vote and we want to kind of know that the vote's going to pass. So if there's any showstoppers, um, take the next couple of weeks to try to figure out what those might be for you. What would stop you from voting in favor of adopting this report on July 12th and get those to me and Megan and Kate. And, and we'll their focus to... is gonna be on the recommendations, the, the, the table 27. That should be our focus. I think that's true, yes. So like, and for me, it would be like, if if you saw a recommendation in there, I mean, let's be honest, if you think there are recommendations in there that are just non-starters, I mean, again, we're not really obliged. You could leave a non-starter recommendation in the plan because we're not promising we're going to do it. Um, 
But it really, I think more important, if there's something, the way Kate and I talked about is that if there's, if you have a good idea that's missing from the report, like say Judy's recommendation, right. even though, even, even though we've added Judy's recommendations to this draft, it still isn't a promissory note to act on them or as specifically written either. However, it at least serves as a, a note to the future planning board that may or may not include Tom <laughs> or others, right? You know, so let's not, if there are good ideas that ought to be in the report that are not, in your opinion, let's get those in. And if there's a just a really terrible idea that you just think shouldn't be in there, or you couldn't really live with leaving it in there, then let's get it out. That would be the way I would sort of think about what you focus on over the next couple of weeks. Does that make sense, Megan, Kate? Yeah, I'm happy with that. Perfect. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks for everyone's time tonight. I really appreciate it. Well, you know, it's it's a really impressive report. I think you guys should yeah. be complimented. Megan's, I know it's a huge gets, amount of work. Yeah, right. It's been a huge amount just to be reading it and reviewing it. <laughs> <laughs> but I love the graphics. I have a, I have like a yeah. sticky note of list for like, if we get to the public phase where I yeah. like, I want this chart up and I want to talk about this thing and that thing, but you know, it's, we're not there yet. Right. But I couldn't help myself as I was going through it. It takes um, a long time yeah. to, to open it up. <laughs> hours. It takes hours to read it. Yeah. And I had them printed off for me at town hall. Cause it also takes ink. Right. So um, yeah. Anyway. I do have one procedural question as we look ahead to July 12th, and that is, if we are indeed going to be voting on a report, this report has not been posted publicly, right? It was not posted publicly tonight. We're having a public meeting discussing a report that is not publicly available. So should this report be publicly posted, I would just, my intuition is yes. Yeah, so there's no, weirdly, there's no requirement for a public comment period, but that I would feel better if it were. Um, what we could do is we could post it for two weeks prior to that meeting um, for the public comment. I think he uh, just means as an agenda. I, I We normally yeah. put documents up with the agenda. Right. That's what I meant, though That's it was interesting that Megan was going a little bit beyond that. Well, I would think I would think it would be when the housing committee discusses it would be the appropriate place for that kind of thing. So it would be appropriate for the for it to be posted publicly by the housing, or committee? if it's going to be advertised, or or given a broader if awareness is going to. I don't think it probably would call for a legal ad, but yeah. but. Um, if if somebody's going to make could an effort to say it in, in between the it, planning we're board and be discussing select board. It. yeah yeah i mean the kind of thing that would go in the scoop i guess but but it does seem reasonable that for our planning board meeting that we would just post the document along yeah. with the agenda yeah. okay so it would be made public appropriately but not necessarily widely advertised, but at least available if people were curious. That makes sense. Okay, I'm good with that. Okay, I think we can close this topic. Thank Great. you, Megan. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Good night, everyone. Thank All you. Right. Good night. Good night. All right. All right. Um, it's been a long night. I am going again, uh, kick to another meeting, the discussion of aquifer protection overlay boundaries. Um, just because, and what I'd like to find out, I did have a chance to review Mary's minutes of our February meeting, and I found them, you know, remarkable. <laughs> and I didn't, well, I, you know, I read 95 out of 100 words. I didn't see anything that jumped out. I think it, she caught the substance of everything. What are we? Did anyone else have a chance? Should we just push this approval of minutes to a future meeting or did enough people have a chance to read them where we could simply? I, I couldn't open it. 
You couldn't open it. All oh, right. I'm yeah. sorry, Tom. I, I forgot that you had trouble with the way it's. I, oh, the open, the ODT format. Yeah, For what it's yeah. worth, when she passes them around, I do save them in Word doc format in the OneDrive folder for the meeting described by the minutes. So Tom, you should be able to find the doc version in the February 22nd meeting folder. I got about halfway through and I have some revisions there. None of them, they're mostly for clarification rather than. Um... Okay, all right. I was just hoping that we could move this along, but let's, uh, so this might be something that we'll, have done by um, July 12th. And if Mary is able to get other uh, minutes done by July 12th, even better. Um, maybe as we're wrapping up a couple of things I wanted to at least make people aware of under the additional items not anticipated. So um, there was a, you know, after the zoning map was approved at town meeting, there was a request by Amy LaValle for us to submit a form number seven as part of the attorney general's approval. And Mary, thankfully, well, Mary, yay, thank you. Mary knew what to do. She, this is what Mary does. So she's done that, submitted it to Amy. Um, there, at that point, the trail has gone cold. Um, I'm now under the assumption that Amy LaValle has or will act on that and she get has that a over. She has a time limit. She has to submit it to the AG within X days. I, I want to say 30 days, but it might be six okay. weeks. And if, well, okay. So, but I have not actually seen positive evidence. I'm not saying it, it hasn't you happened. Won't. Okay. You won't. <laughs> okay. It will, it will come back approved or not approved. Yes, but that depends on Amy taking the next step given I know, what... I know, but Okay. I'm just, just pointing that No, and I understand out. that Amy isn't Lynn, but I don't I suppose you could ask for a copy. But that still won't, you know, if it doesn't well, happen in the within the time span, yeah. then then we're dead anyway. Maybe what I'll simply do is next week gently ask Amy um, to confirm that the form seven is gone to the, you know, when when did the form reach the attorney general's office yeah. since we're monitoring the 90 day clock? Um, you might just mention that. You know, I understand you had town elections in there. Maybe it hasn't happened yet or something like that. That's right. Because what I have not taken any actions about getting the GIS data over onto the online system. I have not taken any actions in terms of getting the new zoning map posted. Well, I mean, you have not yourself, Judy, since you have access to the town website, you haven't posted the new zoning map. That's right. I thought. That, Did you? No, I didn't because right. I thought that uh, Brian's message about it's not official till the AG signs off right. on it sort of meant right. we shouldn't. That's my interpretation as well. So I've just sort of left a tickler for myself until we have uh, approval from the AG about the zoning map. Um, and I think there was uh, just a general reminder, Mary, there, the Budget year is closing out. So, and I looked at the last budget report, and only 20% of the planning board's budget has been expended. So, I hope you're getting your expenses for this fiscal year in. We don't want you to lose out again. It's next on my list. I'm well, I think actually, up a, excuse me. I think actually, at some point, this is more important than. The, certainly than the more recent minutes. So, yeah, because this is a drop dead thing. Well, I think the odds I, of anybody suing us for open meeting violations over it, the last few planning board meetings are pretty small. Okay. Please, yeah, please 
so you're being gently asked to prioritize getting your uh, expenses in for the F the 23 fiscal year so you can get mm -hmm. paid before the books close you can skip the zba ones but we want hers yeah <laughs> who cares who cares about that i did sign all the advertising and another one that was down there amy and i did it together last thursday so that okay got, got i was done. i was looking i've been going over the zba and the the planning board just so i'd know what was what before that's one of the other things i've been doing so i'm assuming the the you're talking about probably the april and the may um the bills they were one of them we the planning board is absorbing one of the costs of the recording advertising for jd ross and i got the other one prior to that one done too Sorry. okay so okay we should be up yeah, to date with the last J J jd show. russ has he's on the may bill okay twice because of the yeah. the, the one uh, of the right. and one jd one. paid for and the other one we're taking care so of. may is all done and april's all done yep okay well i should be able to pick this up and start doing it um for the future because i had a talk with uh, amy schrader and she said it's perfectly okay if i ask the reporter to email the bills directly to me as long as i tell her i'm doing that so she's not looking for them anymore coming in the mail and that would be a big help because right now i don't know you know are they there are they not there and <laughs> i can't run down and check them that often but if I only if I can get them through email, I could pay them, you know, in a more timely fashion, and uh, nothing would pile up. And all I would have to do is make out the bill document and let you know that I've put it in the mailbox so you can sign it. Yep, that would be a lot good. easier if if I'm only doing that end of it <laughs> or not not waiting to see where is it. Yeah. So. But yeah, get your time in. Um, okay. Are there any other items that haven't been anticipated? I move we adjourn. A uh, motion has been made to adjourn. Do I hear a second? I'll second a motion, that. The motion has been seconded. All in favor, raise your hand. All right, most meeting is adjourned until July 12th. Thanks, everybody. Uh, thank you. All right. Thank and you. who community, who will let Amy Lavalley know to get our July 12th meeting on the calendar? Is that you, Judy, or you, Sarah? Or me as I think the, my skip. <laughs> I've got so many things going on right now that I would be very unreliable, I'm afraid. Okay, got it. I will email. I will email Amy Lavalle. I That's can adjust point. the Zoom meetings. It's a new number for the next six meetings. So, okay. But you All now right. have the secret code, Brant. I you know, do we have, have to use the passcode before. We now know we need a password. No, that's just how the meeting is was set up, and you can uncheck the passcode required when you're okay. setting it up. Yeah. I didn't do that. Yeah. Okay. Okay, very good. Thanks. So, well, Amy generates the 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 links, so we'll get a link from her. So maybe I'll simply tell her that's where we're going to meet on July twelfth, out of cycle. July twelfth, out of cycle. Have her send me a link without a required passcode, and then I'll pass that to Judy for eventual agenda great. preparation. Okay. Have a great night, everyone. See you in four weeks. Thank you all. Thank you. All right, bye. bye.